shallow. This spot is close to the blue hole, so I always like to check it first when the tide is switching and the current's not so strong. It's kind of nice, just get to sit here and wait for all the fish to swim until I find the one I want to spear. The problem with spearfishing under the mangroves is there's a lot of little mangrove snapper that you see. So when you see a bigger one, he kind of looks bigger than you think he is. But then you spare them and they're only 13, 14 inches. Still legal, but not as big as you thought they were going to be. Or at least not as big as I thought it was going to be. I got the idea from other spear fishermen, but once I spear the fish, if he's not dead right away, I like to, you know, kill him just by stabbing the brain, because then that way he's not suffering as much. He's literally got his head out of the water, trying to get through the mangroves, trying to get to my fish. I like being able to walk around a lot more when there's a shark in the area. It's nicer. I noticed if I sit still long enough, the fish will actually come back and do circles back and forth, kind of inspecting what I am, and then usually that allows you to line it up and take a nice shot. This one actually ripped his way off the spear, but he was right there, so I was able to grab him before he got away. Alright, now I'm headed to this one blue hole. I wait till it's real shallow, like real low tide. So in that way all the fish are pretty much trapped in the hole, and I don't have as many sharks coming around. But as you can see here, as soon as you crawl up, there's hundreds and hundreds of small mangrove snapper. Now what I'll do is I'll kind of crawl in and just sit on the edge. And all the little guys start coming and kind of spooking and coming back and spooking and coming back. And then that attracts a bigger fish to come and check out like, hey, what's going on? And uh, once he comes around, if he's close enough, I might get a shot off. Big enough, not huge, but big enough. This is a little holding tank, so to speak, a mobile cooler, so I don't have to go back to my kayak every time. That big noise you just heard 
And why I turned around was because I went over this rock section and there was a big hole underneath my leg and something shot out of there. I have absolutely no idea what it was, but it shot right out from under there and scared the crap out of me. First time I've had a Goliath grouper try to steal my fish. He wasn't very big, so I was able to keep my fish, but if he was really big, then, uh, yeah, I would have probably lost my fish entirely. So I put the ice pack in there with some salt water to kind of give it a cold salt water brine. Um, kind of works. Like I said, still a work in progress, but. I'm cheap and I don't want to buy one of those fancy coolers that float behind me, so I buy this instead. Not quite comfortable going under these ledges, uh, let alone by myself. I know there's some big Goliath grouper down there, at least bigger. The last thing I want to do is get underneath a ledge and then have one of them freak out and, I don't know, some bad thing happen. So I'm looking around and that's when I spot this giant tail under this other ledge which turned out to be a Kubera snapper. So I quickly load up and uh, try to get a shot on him. I wanted the headshot so I went around to the front to try to find him and by the time I got close he actually took off and went underneath that other ledge that I was showing you a minute ago and I got that last snapper. So I had to go back and kind of reassess for a moment. So now I'm thinking all is lost until I see his tail right up in the middle there. I'll show you here in a second. And I realize that he's sitting right there and actually within shooting range I just can't get a good look on him. flashlight just wasn't working to light up where he was exactly. And I was so nervous that I didn't want to miss a shot, so my heart was beating and I was trying to control my breathing so I didn't mess the shot up. Still not quite sure what happened because from the video and just from me actually shooting, it looked like I hit it. And it looked like the sword all the way back in the corner. So here I'm looking at all this dirt and I'm expecting there to be a fish on the end of my spear. But once I grab it, I realize that there is no fish on the end of the spear. And it's pretty much a huge disappointment. Gotta be my biggest. Daggum, man. Still got a ton of power in it. If the camera wasn't rolling, I would be extremely, extremely upset.
So pretty much, I saw him, I took a blind shot, and I got a gut shot, which was not a good shot, but it was what it is, you know, I can do so much. And he decided to go buck wild, and I had to basically pin him to the ground and kind of grab him right before the spear came out. So that was, uh, it was pretty crazy, I wish I would have caught on film, but sometimes, you know, that's just the way it happens.